Hey girl, hey, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Misha. Thank you guys for joining me yet again for another review. We are back with a brand new review for Ready to Love, Season 6, Episode 7. Child, I feel like this season been on forever, honey, and we ain't getting nowhere. Ain't no real connections. Don't nobody really like each other. And Tommy is getting on my nerves. If you are new here, then welcome. <laughs> I give lighthearted reviews with a little bit of laughter and a little bit of shade and a whole lot of detail if you're back for a second or third time then welcome back y'all please don't hesitate to like comment and subscribe to the channel share with a friend hit that notification bell so that you can become a part of the opinionated family now child let's get into it if we gonna get into it when the episode first opens up of course the ladies are meeting in the ladies lounge it's a meeting in the ladies lounge they meet in the ladies lounge or whatnot Everyone is in their vibrant colors, honey, giving their own version of the zhuzh. So Tommy comes in and he tells them that it's time for them to meet the BFFs. Okay, so the men are up for elimination this week and it's time for them to meet some of their friends. So this week, one man will be eliminated. In the next scene, Jamala and her two friends, they're meeting Randall. I hate the name Rara, so we will be using Randall over here. And so he shows up to meet them dressed like he just came from 24 Hour Fitness. You know what? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Absolutely not. He would be an automatic no because he's never dressed appropriately. I can't stand a man that doesn't know how to dress for the occasion. He always has on crew socks, shorts, some J's, and a t-shirt. I don't give a damn if we're in Miami. I really don't. I don't care nothing about party in the city where the heat is on all night on the beach to the break of dawn. Welcome to Miami. Bienvenido a Miami. I don't care nothing about that. <laughs> I don't give a damn what Will Smith was talking about when he was singing on Sunset. I don't care. I want you to put some clothes on because what that tells me is that you don't respect me and respect meeting my friends. Because why would you not put your clothes on you right? So therefore, in thus and such, what it makes me think is when I introduce you to my parents, you going to have on these shorts showing your knees. I don't want to keep seeing your knees. Now, I know Miami is the city where the sun is always out. Well, honey, it rains every now and again. I mean, every five minutes, but then the sun comes back out. I don't want to keep seeing your knees. And that's just that on that. Moving forward. So he comes in, sits down, they're talking to him, asking about him. He says he was born and raised in D.C. and moved to Miami. So the friend was like, well, wait a minute. Were you running from anything in Miami, honey, like a situationship or a child's mother, honey, a marriage? I know that's right, friend, honey. Ask all the questions, okay? So then they asked him if he played sports. Of course, he said basketball. So then they asked if he had another connection. And he said, yeah, I have two more. But, um, you know, you know what? Jamala is like my best friend I call cap with a capital C she was like you know normally I don't feel butterflies but when he said that I definitely did and girl don't be so easily impressed honey he ain't said nothing I can tell you you my best friend right now I won't mean nothing okay it gave me absolutely nothing moving forward so once they heard that child that was done with him in his gym shorts he was free to go so honey then he got in his mustang or whatever it was he got in and that car told me all i needed to know honey i can't remember what it was but it was a thought mobile honey and i didn't like it okay you know what he reminds me so much of jason i just cannot get it out of my mind from the height to the basketball to the way that he is he just reminds me of Jason and I just can't shake it. So she walked him out and they shared some kisses and she was like, we're kissing all out in the open. Girl, he is literally putting his mouth on everybody. Okay. Everybody putting their mouth on everybody except Mike. <laughs> Baby, Mike said, if you have kissed, honey, you have been dismissed. Don't bring your ass over here because I don't want nothing that anybody else has kissed, honey. Mike said, forget it. Okay. But he kissing everybody. I hate to break that to you, Jamala. But girl, I'm speaking directly to you, honey. It's not what you think. And I can tell that she's really into Rara and whatnot. But I just don't know if he's sincere. I just don't get it. I really don't. So she goes back inside and her friends tell her that they really liked him. And they felt like he was genuine. In the next scene, Katie and her friend, they're meeting Swayze at a restaurant, right? So her friend is like, when he comes in, she goes, you aren't a serial app dater, are you? He said, yeah, I'm on some apps. I mean, I'm single. Okay. I mean, that's honest. So he tells her that he's been single for three years. So her friend was like, well, what drew you to Katie? And he gonna say, I mean, look at her. She said, okay, yeah, look at her. She's a beautiful girl, but what? He was like, she's my type. She said, what type is that? He said, any type. <laughs> 
child not any type that isn't an answer what is it about her specifically that you like Swayze is not very good at answering questions because y'all remember when he almost got this woman locked up in the beginning of the episodes the very first episode talking about he was 16 and she was 45 or whatever it is that he said child he's just not good at answering questions so her friend was like so you've only dated Latin women he said um yeah but that was before but you know before then I was dating all types of women okay so after all the women you decided black women weren't for you and then you moved on to latin women i'm just trying to get an understanding of what's going on so she was like well how many black women have you dated during your dating phase none zero zilch nada okay none okay he's dated absolutely none so she was like you know you're not dating black women even though i'm biracial that to me is a red flag i agree that it could be a, a red flag if you've never ever dated a black woman but he didn't say that he didn't date black women just during the time that he's been dating he's been you know dating latin women okay and this is the thing in miami that's not abnormal now i'm not trying to give swayze a pass but i'm telling y'all when i used to frequent miami black guys were the last guys to talk to me and I have absolutely no idea why, but it's just something about Miami. It's just like, it's really hard to explain. But I mean, he didn't say he didn't date black women. Me personally, I felt like Katie was showing out in front of her friend child and she act like she don't know how to act. I don't feel like he actually doesn't like black women. And that's just me. So he said he felt that the friend was disrespectful. And how is that a red flag? Because he wants to expand his horizons. It's nothing wrong with you having a preference but you couldn't find no black women on that app today like not none i mean because that's probably where she's looking at it from like that perspective is like listen dude you're here you're thrusted onto the own channel okay it don't get no blackity black black blacker than this and um i'm just trying to figure out if you weren't on this show would you like katie i think that's probably what she's thinking he was like i don't have a type he said you know you're really getting on my nerves child i wasn't expecting him to say that out loud <laughs> baby he said it out loud and didn't give not one damn do you hear me so katie was like well he did say he didn't want to date black women he said i never said that he said he was triggered by that because not only was it a lie but his child's mother is black his daughter is black and his mom is black so that upset him so i feel like katie was being childish in that moment trying to get a rise out of him honey and it backfired so he gets up and he walks out because he's pissed so she follows behind him and she's like are you really acting like this bro what's wrong with you are you really acting like this well the man said you lied on him okay and you done brought your little sidekick in and now she's telling him that he's a walking red flag you lying and saying that he dated never dated black women when his child's mother is black like it's just it's giving weird and so he got up and left honey oh, well that didn't go well in the next scene Trinika and her crew hey y'all her doctor friend and her pilot friend yes for the md and the pilot as friends honey that's what i'm talking about so lj goes to meet them and baby she pulled out index cards i said okay friend well let's get into it if we gonna get into it so she asked where does he see himself in five years he said he sees himself as a millionaire with a beautiful lady like Trinika next to him okay lj so they asked if he would consider getting married again and he said yeah i would consider it if i got married to the right person so they go over to the side Trinika and lj they go over to play a little bit of golf right so then justice shows up oh child so they were asking justice if he's ever been unfaithful he was like yeah you know i played basketball so i was in that life you know just doing me you know doing whatever i wanted to do so they were like okay so where do you see yourself in five years i don't sir say what now so will you still be with us will you be among the living or you plan on transitioning in five years what the hell do you mean you don't see yourself in five years <laughs> oh i can't stand it he was like you know i'm just gonna let god work it all out for me because you know i, I i've been there done that I, I went there wrong and it didn't work so setting goals and making plans didn't work okay girl girl please don't even look justice this way ever again honey so they're like well what would you like to happen he gonna say whatever he like at this point okay i would end this conversation immediately he is too weird and too nonchalant for me honey if you don't have no answers i ain't got no questions so get up and kick rocks and don't come back around here no more no more honey you are not ready to love moving forward so in the confessional he gonna say yeah i think my vibe with her friends i think it was dope 
sir, are you on dope? Because nothing about that was good. The interaction was very strange. So they asked him about plans and he hit him with a Jeremiah 29 11. <laughs> he is legit nuts. Justice is crazy, honey. He is crazy. He said, you know, I try to be simplistic because I'm complicated. No, you want to appear to be complicated. You really like substance and depth and you ain't talking about nothing. You sit down and you speak your whole tip speech and it's not making any sense. OK, and you're just sitting back, not giving a care in the world and expecting everybody to gravitate to you. You're giving foolish, honey. It's ridiculous. Moving forward. So Randall shows up next. Child, Trinika got a little roster. Child, I know, honey. She might be the female Randall. So, speaking of shows up, Randall shows up wearing those dang on Daisy Dukes. Look at that boy with them Daisy Dukes on. Randall, do you own regular clothes or just athleisure wear? Why don't you ever have your clothes on you right? You know, he is really pissing me off from that unkempt beard to those little bito shorts. It's really starting to tick me off, honey. So they asked him if he was a ladies man. He was like, well, you know, I can be. I'm friendly. I like to talk, especially when I'm single. Eh, wrong answer. So they asked Randall if he's been kissing Tranika. And he was like, you know, we had something like that. Child Randall done kissed everybody. Jamala, Tranika, Kayla, all the us. Honey, any uh he can get his mouth on, he gonna kiss him. Y'all, I don't know if it was just me. Okay. But did y'all see how Justice was sitting over there watching while they were talking to Randall like their little brother? He had his hand underneath his chin and he was just looking, <laughs> he was just looking at him. Baby, that was so funny to me. I said, Justice is really a fool. Do you hear me? So in the confessional, he gonna say, well, you know, my level of connection changed with Trinika in the group setting because I learned about the other men. So, I mean, if you got a stronger connection, then go ahead and be with that connection. Well, what do you want her to do? Not participate like you haven't been? If that's all it takes for you, honey, you were never really interested in her to begin with. So he said, you know, women want you to take them from the man and show them. He's like, I ain't showing you nothing. You show me. What you mean? The men on this season are so questionable. And I'm really saying that because I'm trying to be nice, honey. Justice, you can and you need to get the hell on. You are all about yourself and it's just foolish. You are on a show where everyone is looking for love. Why are you threatened by other men? It's giving insecurity. You and Mike. It is giving straight up insecurity. So as soon as they leave, they're like, yeah, we don't like Justice the Joker. Not the Joker. <laughs> Child, he was giving the Riddler when he was sitting down with y'all, honey. Riddle me this, riddle me that. Who's afraid of the big black bat? Honey, he wasn't talking about nothing. Do you hear me? And I do mean absolutely damn nothing. He was giving y'all the joke and he was giving me the Riddler. Baby, they saw right through him. Trinika, let me tell you something, honey. I'm speaking directly to you because I know you're listening. Please keep them friends, honey, forever and a day. Because those are real friends that really had insight. I'm not just sitting around because they cute and just choose them. Looney, I'm speaking directly to you and your friend, honey. But we're going to get into that as we get into it. So they're like, no, he's not a nice guy. He's just not a nice man. Trinika, these friends are telling you the real. I don't even know why you liked him to begin with. I'm completely confused by that. But honey, that's your choice. Moving forward. So they think LJ is genuine and Randall is playing games. Randall is definitely for the ready to love streets. In the next scene, Sharice is meeting with Samson with her friend Rochelle. And baby, Rochelle is a tall drink of water. Do y'all hear me? I said, baby, look at this Glamazon. She is towering over Sharice. It's giving WNBA. <laughs> baby, I seen Rochelle. I said, baby, Rochelle is a tall lady. So she wants her to see how serious Samson is about her. Well, he said you were his oxygen, honey. So let's see. But quite frankly, I don't buy nothing that Samson says because he gives me performative. But maybe that's just me. Over on the other side with Kayla, she's with her friend Kelly. And, you know, she really wants to know who is really here for her and will she be able to make a connection. So she's meeting Mike and Randall. Girl, you mean with Mike? After he took you on a romantic date to the pool hall and refused to kiss you? And didn't he say your age was a factor? Girl, you're just wasting time. But honey, let's just get into it. So she's telling her friend that her and Mike's connection is complex and he has another connection. So her friend is like, girl, are you just ignoring the red flags? Honey, Andy is. Back at Sharice's, Samson arrives. Hey, sir. 
And he's like, you know, everyone's happy to see me, her friend, her, even the dog back over here with Mike. Mike is going into the date talking about, yeah, I need to address Kayla's other connections. Why don't you have another connection with Brandy? There is no reason for you to be worried about what she is doing with someone else. That is not you and your tank top. There is just no reason for it. So he gets in there. And so they're like, oh, yeah, we're drinking Pinot Grigio. Here he go. What is it? Pinot what? Ugh. No, thank you. No, thank you, honey. It's giving basic, honey. He don't know nothing but Hennessy. I don't want nobody that's going to sit down and order a Hennessy and apple juice. No, thank you. Mm -mm. Moving forward. So her friend is asking about their connection, and he brings up her connection and her kissing the other men, but he hasn't kissed anyone. So you ain't kissed Brandy. You feeding her grapes and massaging her shoulders, but you have not kissed Brandy. Okay. All I hear personally are excuses. Like, clearly you're not interested in Kayla for real. So just go on over there and be with Brandy. And let me sing the theme song to y'all, honey, because you're wasting people's time. So her friend is like, that's really petty of you, Mike. Y'all are not together yet. Girl, I wish you would tell him again. Back over here with Samson, he's being asked about what he expected from this journey. And he said to be married, he wants to be engaged in a year because he's 48. So here comes Randall over here with Kayla in his blue jean cookout shorts, ready to make Mike uncomfortable. <laughs> I said, Randall in these damn shorts. These shorts are haunting me. Randall, go away from me with this. Oh, I hate them shorts, honey. Baby, Randall is mean all the friends. Do y'all hear me? So in the confessional, he gonna say, yeah, I'm ready to meet my third set of friends, but Jamala is my number one. Not your third set of friends. So her friend asked Randall if he had any other connections. He was like, yeah, I do. So she was like, okay, so is Kayla the strongest? He gonna say, well, she's one of them huh strongest implies that there can only be one not several randall you are full of it but i already knew that so therefore and thus and such i'm not learning nothing new moving forward so mike jumps in talking about see randall and kayla they been kissing mike is so childish to be his age See, this is why I don't think more than one person should meet the friends it should be your strongest connection and you should meet one on one not two people meet one friend honey because then you get foolish craziness like what mike is doing back over with samson he was like i know we're all having fun and whatnot but honey i gotta go deuces so samson had to run so they're ending his time with sharice and rochelle now me personally i don't see any chemistry there but sharice said that they made a connection sharice was like yeah our connection is getting stronger and i feel like we're both ready to love okay moving forward back over with kayla kayla's friends is like girl mike is for the streets now she didn't say for the streets honey but i'm just putting a little zhuzh on it she basically said mike is, mike is not it girl he's not giving what's supposed to be gave and randall you're not even giving him a proper chance he was watching you the entire time and the whole time you staring at mike see this is the thing the sexual chemistry with Mike is strong for Kayla and Kayla's still kind of young. So, you know, they getting it popping. Not her and Mike, but I'm saying the age group. You know, so I feel like the sexual chemistry is what's drawing her into Mike, but he don't even look like nothing I would lay down with child. But I mean, maybe that's just me. So anyway, Randall is the type of guy that appears to be the nice guy. But Randall ain't fooling me, honey. He got some stuff behind him as well. But Mike's is just more in the forefront. He got the piece and chain, the little tank tops. He driving around in his little Hellcat. It's giving, I'm put me in your back seat real quick. Randall, on the other hand, is the guy that you can kind of dress up and take to your mama if he take them damn shorts off. So I think that's what the friend is seeing. So Kayla starts getting emotional. I'm like, girl, why are you crying? Girl, I know you ain't crying over no Mike. Oh, honey, absolutely not. So she was like, I just... I know I need a man like Randall, but you know, I, I know girl. Anyway, moving forward in the next scene, Brandy and her friend, Nakota, they're going to meet her potential matches. Charles Sampson shows up. And not only was I shocked to see Sampson show up, but these two awkwardly accidentally kissed on the lips. Baby, you better not let Mike find out, honey. Your connection is done. You're done. <laughs> girl, if he find out you kissed Samson? Oh, baby, you will have to scrub your lips with peroxide, honey, and Vaseline. Child, you wouldn't be no more good. Do you hear me? Okay, I'm done. 
because what is Samson doing here, Brandy? And girl, you play all day. Over on the other side, Looney is going to meet with her friend Ebony and they're meeting with Justice. And her and her friend Ebony look just alike. I was like, they look just alike. Back with Samson and Brandy, her friend is asking him if he's attracted to Brandy. And he's like, yeah, I am attracted to you. You do know that, right? How y'all mouth kissing and meeting friends, but you aren't sure she knows you're attracted to her? Make it make sense. This don't make no sense. Just stop trying to fill up it. Will Packer. Listen directly to me, sir. We don't need immediate episodes of Ready to Love. Although we love the show, we're not going to forget about it. And once it comes back, we're going to be thrilled, but we're going to be thrilled with quality because this right here is a bunch of fluff. Y'all are piecing episodes together. That makes absolutely no sense. Why is Brandy sitting with Samson to meet her friend and she doesn't even realize he's attracted to her? That does not make any sense. Now, I'm not trying to nitpick the show apart, but we have to have some type of validity to the show honey it's just giving ridiculousness and so she was like in the confessional you know it's obvious but I had not heard it from him he was like well let me just tell you right now I am more than interested in getting to know you so then Mike comes in honey bearing gifts for Brandy and the BFF but he ain't bring Kayla nothing but sarcasm Kayla cut your losses Mike is not interested honey he's not interested back with Looney and Justice her friend was asking him about sex. She was like, when do you require it? Uh, I'm not sure why that's relevant right now. Friend, what are you asking? When does he require sex? So he gonna say, I don't think about sex. You know, I can have sex without touching you. <sighs> okay. No dates. No phone calls. You bet not DM him. No text. No spending money. And you're gonna have sex with your mind. Now don't get me wrong. I love to be mindful every now and again honey sometimes the intellectual conversation stimulates you where everything is flowing okay and you be like oh baby <laughs> oh honey oh child you just love it okay you love it but sir what are you saying talking about i mean i i, I could just have i don't need that what pisses me off about justice is he always answers questions like he's too cool for school just answer the question sir Ugh. so LJ shows up and he immediately gets the sex questions as well he's like well I'm an island boy so what you think so he was like dang she just jumped right in yeah asking everybody about sex it's really weird so she asked about his connection and LJ said Looney and Trinika are his strongest connections but Looney never returns his phone calls she was like yeah I'm not a phone person oh okay girl well then you might need justice he hates the phone as well back with Brandy and Mike and Samson Nakota asked about Mike being a dad and he was like yeah I love it so she was like well would you want to have kids with Brandy he was like yeah I'm open to it open to it is not telling me yes lies all lies because you clearly stated in the earlier part of the season that you did not want to have any more children Brandy please don't waste your time on him honey so Samson said you know Mike and Brandy are more in sync and I mean everybody can see it but I mean you just never know we do know it ain't gonna happen captain moving forward so once they leave, the BFF, she was like, I don't know who to choose. Girl, I'm not any help. I just don't know. So Brandy in the confessional, she was like, I need a new friend. I need a friend to help me. I got you, boo. Don't worry about this. Neither one of them. Okay. Brandy, neither one of them. Take all your pretty and all your fine and all your looking for your first serious relationship outside of ready to love. Mike lies and he can be rude. Okay. He can be rude at times. And Samson is playing a numbers game. And he ain't fooling me. You deserve someone that's not here. You can thank me later. Back over here with Looney, they leave. And Ebony is telling her, I'm team justice. Because you would run all over LJ. Looney, you need to talk to Brandy. You also need a new friend. Because she chose justice. And she only asked him about sex. So therefore, in thus and such, that's not the friend that you need, honey. I'm just saying. In the next scene, the ladies meet at the ladies' lounge, and of course, you know, Tommy's going to ask about the dates. So Brandy tells Tommy that her friend liked both of them. She couldn't really choose. She's like, but I'm leaning towards Mike. So Kayla said, you know, she likes Mike, but her friend felt that Randall is what she needs. So Jamala is like, yeah, me and Rara, we had a great date. My friends loved him. It went wonderfully. And child, you know, Kayla was over there looking at her like, girl, I know you in line. So Sharice tells them that Samson met her friend Rochelle and everything went swimmingly. So Looney said that her friend was definitely Team Justice. Yuck. Okay, yuck. It's a yuck and it's a hell now. 
So Trinika said her friends liked LJ and called Justice, Justice the Joker, and said that they could smell his horse from a mile away. So he go, Kayla, well, we didn't need the friends to know that. Well, Kayla, you needed the friend to tell you Mike ain't it. Honey, y'all all need a little direction, sis. Every last one of y'all. So he go, Looney. They doing too much. They doing too much. <laughs> Nah, friend, they ain't doing too much, honey. That friend knows a fool when she sees one. And Justice is definitely a fool. So Katie tells them that her and her friend met with Swayze and the friend and Swayze were a little bit combative. So Tommy was like, well, what's, what happened? She's like, well, until we talk about it, you know, I won't bring up my red flags for him. I don't want to talk about it right now. Oh, no, ma'am, honey, please pipe up like you pipe up with everything else, honey. We want to hear it. Speak your speech. Now you don't want to talk? Girl, anyway. So Sharice pipes up. And Sharice was like, oh, yeah, well, girl, he called me. And he was very upset. He said that you said that he only dates Latino women. And he had felt some kind of way about that because his child's mother is black. Um, Kadian, how does it feel to have Sharice tell you she talked to the man and is on his side? You remember when you turned to her when Zoe aka bozo acted a damn fool and said well i've been talking to him all weekend and woman to woman how do you feel oh okay moving forward doesn't that seem familiar child is a whole fool she didn't want to talk about that but then after sharice brought it out she's like oh, okay well since you brought that up tommy was like oh, okay well i get to hit the red flags yeah you get to hit the red flags and let's get into it so she told them what happened, you know, at the dinner about him storming out and getting mad because she said that he doesn't date black women. She was like, I'm still connected to him, but I'm only connected to him until after we have this conversation. And you're gone. So Tommy asked who they weren't feeling. Looney said Swayze because they've never talked and him not dating a black woman. It's a no. Cherie said Mike. Brandy said Justice. He doesn't pursue. He wants to be pursued. And she is the prize. Honey, I know that's right. Trinika also said justice because Trinika is taking her friend's advice. Good job, Trinika. Brandy said LJ because they say he's just a friend. Honey, he's in the friend zone. Katie and also said LJ because he's a friend as well. So it's time for the eliminate. So justice goes on a date with Kayla. Honey, it's giving weird and it's giving awkward. And you know, he comes in leaning back, expecting for you to pour into him. Over on the other side, LJ is going on a date with Looney why is LJ in the bottom? LJ was like, you know what? I know that after the ladies have a ladies lounge that you do not want to be called for a date. So let's just see what's going to happen. I was confused because what happened to Looney and LJ's connection? It just went away. And baby, when he sat down, he was ready to get into it. He was like, okay, so what do you want to tell me? She was like, oh, you want to jump right into it? Yes, let's get into it. Back with Justice and Kayla, he's still making it a point to say that he doesn't chase women. Women need to be in the position to be pursued. Boy, shut up, honey. I ain't even going to repeat it. Moving forward. Back over with LJ and Looney. They're talking about him only being a friend. Y'all know what? It's a shame that the nice guys get friend zoned. And I know everybody has been guilty of that a time or two. You know, oh, he's too nice. I'm going to run over him. Child, I can do whatever I want to him. I'm telling you right now, give me a nice guy. Just give me a nice person. That's it. I don't care about no swag, honey. I don't care about who you been with, who you know. I just want you to be nice. And that's just it. Because like sometimes it comes to a point in your life where you're just like, you just want a nice person. That's what you deserve. So anyway... Kayla tells Justice he's not ready to love. Oh, child, thank goodness. I'm glad that's that on that. He's like, okay, okay, I'm cool. I'm cool with that. I'm able to observe projection, and I'm also able to observe BS. Well, honey, I hope you observe your own BS on the way out. Good riddance. I say good day. So LJ is still ready to love. Oh, child, poor LJ, stay up for elimination. That poor man has been up for elimination I don't know how many times. If y'all don't leave that man alone... And that was the end of the episode. Show y'all comment down below and tell me exactly what you thought about this episode. I thought it was pretty boring. I'm bored with the season, quite frankly. Child, I almost skipped this episode, to be quite honest with y'all. But because I love y'all and we get into it as we get into it, comment down below and tell me exactly what you think. Please don't hesitate to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And as always, stay safe, stay blessed, spread love, not germs. Peace.